Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RPT, season number eight. It is Red Pill Tamales, episode number 90. 90. We're creeping up on 100, and I'm fresh off set from HBO. I can't wait to tell you all about that. Uh, I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's Bring up, Bring. everybody? It's so good to be back in person. For real, man. It's thunderstorms. I mean... It, you hurricane. Know, yeah, hurricane. I mean, really, man, they're really trying to sabotage this show. <laughs> we already know they're using harp. To try to silence us, my boy. That's right. Uh, it is Wednesday, September 22nd, year of our Lord, 2021. I am a stand-up comedian. I only have a few cities left, so if you want to come on in. Hey, because I got credits now. Now when they introduce me, they're going to be like, you've seen them on Netflix. You've seen them on HBO. You've seen them on Food Channel. You've seen them on the Cooking Channel. I was on the Cooking Channel one time. Really? Yeah, it was very brief. Did you make something, or are you just like an extra? I was uh, basically, um, they went to... What is it called? El Real Tex-Mex, which they shut down. But uh, they had the Chingo Bling platter, and they had me in the shot. I was super hungover. I was I had a rough night. But uh, anyway, yeah, that was my cooking show experience. All right, Freedom of Speech Tour, our next stop. It's only a handful of cities left. We're headed to Addison, Texas. So everybody in the Dallas-Fort Worth area come through October 7th through the 10th. Back to San Antonio. We just came from over there. October 14th through the 16th. A lot of love, man. Everywhere we went, like... Every valet, bus boy, everybody, bro. We was out there. Uh, then we have Raleigh, North Carolina, or how my wife says it, Riley. Riley. Who do you want for Riley? Yep. And I'm like, uh, that's not a city. <laughs> We're going to be out there October 24th. And then Irvine, California, back to the West Coast, November 3rd. Much love on the West Coast. And then we finish it off in H-Town, Texas, November 5th through the 7th. I want to start filming some of these um, because when I got hit up, to submit for this film, this festival, the comedy festival, the Ha Comedy Festival in San Antonio. It's going to be on HBO Max. I believe it drops like early next year. When they hit me up, they're like, send us some footage. And a lot of comedians, they were like, oh, man, I got to go tape some shit because they, they didn't have nothing on tape. So thankfully, I had something on tape. Um, they had me resubmit something else. They like that joke better. Like, it just fit better with what everybody else was talking about. But a lot of talent on that stage, man. I got to meet Paul Rodriguez, uh, my boy Emilio Rivera, who was in Philly Brown with me. You know him from the yep. Mayans and a whole bunch of movies. He was there. Uh, Machete was uh, one of, like, the presenters, but it was, like, pre-filmed and shit on the camera, on the screen. Uh, the cast of the Garcia, I think it's called the Garcias. It used to be a show on Nickelodeon, but now it's going to be a series on HBO. A lot of other comedians. Um, my boy Steve Trevino killed it. Uh, Love that guy. Yeah, so he and I were like the Texas boys that brought the heat. You heard me? So, yeah, we kicked it backstage. Shout out to my boy Rick Gutierrez, man. He's like one of my comedy coaches. Uh, he really is one of the ones that helped me go from like a beginner, from just hosting, you know, hitting the road to like, okay, you're going in the deep end of the pool. You're going last. You're headlining. You're doing an hour by yourself. No training wheels. So he was one of the first people that really encouraged me. So he was there by my side, like gave me my notes. We rehearsed real quick. It's an old joke of mine. I hadn't done it in years. And uh, great experience, bro. Like when I got off stage off that first take, because we did two shows, uh, Mighty Soul was like, that's it. You hit every note. You didn't forget any parts. Great expressions. It was physical, animated, uh, your face. Everything was funny. Because um, it was a big theater, dude. It was like phew, way to the top and shit. Nice. And uh, Rick was super proud. So I'm like, okay, I did good. He's like, you got it, man. That's it. That's going to be the take. So your second take, just, you know, Let just loose. try to get as <clears throat> close to the first one as you did. Wow. So I just tried some different things. but um, Knocked it out of the park on the first one. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. So great experience. Um, make sure you guys check it out because I need that HBO algorithm to recognize my name. So when I go pitch them, if I go license them a half hour or if I say, hey, I want to put out a Chingo Presents and we're going to have the up and coming new faces, you know, heavy hitters that maybe haven't gotten on those big platforms. Um, Cause come on now, I, I got I got them credits now, baby. You shit. forgot MTV earlier, you know? That's well, an OG yeah. credit. Yeah, that's old, yeah, yeah. But on some comedy shit. <laughs> okay, who is this? One of my kids trying to open the damn? Yeah, should I lock the door? Yes. Let me go lock it, keep talking. Yeah, so um, great experience, man. Um, ran into a lot, I ran into Nick Guerra. He killed it on stage at Jokesters, cause they had, different shows in different rooms different venues like throughout the weekend right and uh, i got to do a practice set because i had to knock off some rust uh so nick Guerra, definitely props to him man very funny he de he definitely killed it 
Um, so this was a legit festival, right? It wasn't just like for the recording. It was like maybe like a Moon Tower kind of comedy festival. Like people from the area would just bought tickets and went to go see this recording. Yeah, they they had several they had several events and room. They had like an all female lineup in some other room in the hotel where we we're staying. And then they had like something going on at Jokesters. So I don't know if I could compare it to Montreal because I've never been to that. So it, it wasn't a huge, huge festival. But you did see like, yo, this cat's from Austin. Like, you know, hey, Nick, are you filming? No, I'm not taping, but I'm doing these rooms. You know mm, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was very a very cool experience, man. Like I just, it gave me that little boost, that little boost of confidence where you're just like, okay, am I canceled? What's going on? Like, am I going to have to operate outside of the Hollywood machine? You know, because I want to be based out of Texas and I don't want a boss and I don't want to be censored. Yeah. So I was a little nervous, like, man, are they looking at my Instagram right now? I you know mean, what I'm saying? Like, are they on my story right now talking about this boy is showing these Haitian people <laughs> uh, 15,000 Haitians under a bridge? This must stop. Look, we're, we're, what are we in September now? I think it's safe to say you could have decided in like February that you weren't canceled once you started touring again, show started, you know, selling out, you were on the road. Like, you're like, oh, I'm actually good. Yeah, but HBO though. Yeah. Because, you know, the Corpus Christi and, you know, Mission Texas, they're going to have your back. Midland's going to have your back. Shit, a lot of love in California, man. So I'm definitely riding off a high right now. Like, even Marisol, you know, because, you know, she, we have a two-month-old, so she hasn't really been on the groove. Like, she's been emailing and meetings and conference calls and stuff like that, but she had to put on her sports jacket. Mm. She had to put on her, you know, her good heels. You know, she's got to go mingle and network and put out fires and be, like, the representative on set type of thing. Yeah. So even she was like, I feel like my old me, you know. I bet she, you know, this this is a not. This isn't meant to sound rude, but like, cause she has a sense of purpose as a mom and a wife, mm -hmm. but a sense of purpose as like boots on the ground tour manager. It's like a whole different sense of purpose for her. I just, I'm, I'm sure of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're just obviously we always want to be pandemic proof. You know what I mean? We don't want to repeat a 2020, but um, you know, we're focused. We have a plan, and now it's just a matter of. Don't let these punk ass politicians shut us down. Don't let a weapons lab in motherfucking Wuhan unleash virus number three, you know, because right now they have an economic contagion happening. You know, with what they got going on over there with their finances, that shit's about to spill over. And they're having a whole debacle, the Chinese economy. So they're going to want to invade Taiwan just to get people to focus on something else. But, um, but yeah, man. Very cool to feel like a real fucking... They're like, what's his SAG? The uh, union, the actor's union. I'm like, I'm not in that shit. Yeah. They're like, what's his IMDB so we can update? I'm like, I don't fuck with that shit. She needs me to move my car. Are and, you serious? Yeah, okay. and the streets were filled, so that's why I parked in the driveway. Do you need to pause it? Yeah, let me just uh, pause it. A bit. But overall, man, San Antonio was great, and we can't wait to go back, man. We're going to be back uh, in a couple weeks, so super excited about that, man. And uh, of course, all the members of the Thea, everywhere we go, like now... Like, I get it. When it's my show, you know, people be like, what's up, man? I love what you're doing on the podcast. But we were there at the high comedy thing and just very low key. People be like, hey, man, I love what you're doing, man. Keep speaking up. You know, got your back. We listen every week. <laughs> so I'm like, OK, cool. Everything's going full, full circle, man. I really love it. I um, like it. So, yeah, man, shout out to all the patrons. If you have not signed up, please do so. Uh, support us. Keep our freedom of speech alive. As y'all know, I mean. Everybody from Project Veritas to Nicki Minaj to Trump to like, damn, you have to like watch your Orwellian double speak and watch out like what the narrative is. And you can't you can't say certain things at certain times. Right. Like yeah. there was a point in time where you couldn't say like we think it came from a weapons lab in the in Wuhan, you know, which is controlled by the PLA and the CCP. And it's like, no, it came from soup. So that's why it's super important that you guys help protect our freedom of speech. We appreciate the love. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Burr, burr, burr. New Tia merch on the way. New Man, my tour is almost over, but my freedom collection that's about to drop for the tour is going to be off the chain. Make, keep an eye on that. Chingobling.com. Shout out to Shell Shock CBD. Go get your gummies. They got all kind of CBD gummies with melatonin. They got the Delta 8s. They got chocolate bars. They got bombs, ointments. All kinds of roll-ons and goodies. Hit up shellshockcbd.com when you check out. Use promo code CHINGO and save 10%. Last thing. 
Tell them about the newsletter, Rob. All right, guys. Chingo used to have Fedia Fridays, you know, something we used to put out on a regular basis. But now, with things like Project Veritas coming out, have you seen the videos, by the way? Which might, we yeah, might get into. I started watching those. Yep. Okay, part one dropped yesterday, part two dropping today. But we're going to have a weekly newsletter that goes out so that you can at least keep up with what's going on, latest episodes, latest clips in case you miss it, tour dates, merchandise. And also, just where are we? Where is the What Do You Said page in case something happens? Where is the Real Chingo Bling page in case something happens? Because you never know. Yeah. And it's on the list, but. At uh, uh, Latinos for Trump, mm -hmm. huge page, 204,000 followers, wow. wiped out by Instagram. Now they had to bounce back as GOP Latinos. Yeah. So please go, the, yeah. Yeah, go to chingobling.com and just sign up. It's the regular newsletter. It's the same newsletter you would sign up for if you want to keep uh, track of the tour or anything else. But also that way you know where the podcast is and where the accounts are in case they go anywhere. Yeah, we basically have to hack the shadow ban. Like, these are crazy times, y'all. I never thought... I never, ever thought I'd be in this situation in 2021 where we're having to tell people, like, look, man, we got to watch what we say. Like, if y'all haven't paid attention, if the Nicki Minaj debacle didn't help open your eyes to, to look at things like, whoa, if you step away from the narrative, they will, within 24 hours, Jimmy Kimmel's writer's going to have jokes for him. Joy Reid is going to do a whole thing on you. Everybody, mom, is going to figure out how they could spin it in their benefit, right? So if you guys didn't realize... That somebody like Nicki Minaj, they could put words in your mouth, twist your words up, and try to make you look crazy. Because what you're saying goes against the Dude, narrative. For as long as Joy Reid's been on TV, she seems like she just started yesterday. She's terrible on camera mm. and microphone. She talks like a completely green, just dummy. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. I think she went to Harvard or some shit, but just super lefty. It, you know, It's super like, it's not sincere it's sounding, you know? It sounds just disingenuous. Maybe she's just getting paid to read the fucking script. For Maybe. sure. She's like Ron Burgundy. She'll say anything that's on the <laughs> teleprompter. <laughs> that's how Biden be reading that shit. <laughs> Dude, they had a teleprompter for us, man, at the HBO thing. And guess what I did? Went off prompter? I was not going to look at that fucking prompter. Can you go off prompter? I mean, I had my joke. I went to tell my joke that was pre-approved. Yeah. So, but I'm saying, can you like? Do you like have? If do you have to read off prompter ever and like like it or not like it or do you care to do it? Well, in the case of doing stand-up... There's no way, right? No. It, it would be the dumbest... No offense to whoever's idea it was. I guess it was for, like, if you're lost and you want to glance up at your notes type of thing. And supposedly, like, that's where the, hey, time's up thing, like, your light. Yeah. When it comes to stand-up, man, like, you just... You, it's, like a, it's almost like a form of acting. Like, the shit got to be believable. That style of performance. And... You know, the last thing you want to look like up there is like you're reading off a fucking script. That's not that's not what stand up is. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, let's not read off the teleprompters when we're doing stand up. But uh all right, so let me just run through the items that we're what we're, we're, we're going to talk about today. So, again, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Very important in these times. All right, so today we're going to talk about the border is in historic chaos we don't even know what to call it no more it went from crisis to debacle to invasion to chaos we don't know what the fuck it is uh also tech censorship censorship strikes again we're gonna talk about the uh, latinos with trump page getting uh deleted project veritas begins leaking the clips they got the whistleblowers on there uh what does hhs stand for health and human services yeah so there's federal right yeah also chris rock catches covid after being fully jabbed and he tweeted about it and people went in. Uh, he was like, I just found out I have COVID. Trust me, you don't want this. Get vaxxed. And it's like, bro, you're vaxxed. And Rogan is not. And De La Hoya was double jabbed. He was in the hospital. And y'all's narr narrative is falling apart. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talking Facts. about horse goo, horse pills. It's like, why wouldn't y'all want to celebrate like the treatments that are out there? But anyway, we're going to get into that. Demand for teacher to be fired after displaying pride and fuck the police flags in classroom. It never fucking ends. Uh, not a mask in sight at the Emmys. Seth Rogen went on a rant suggesting the Emmys broke COVID safety rules. Uh, I guess it's misguided, according to the L.A. County Department of Health, which is refuting some of his comments. Interesting. Dumb comments, too. The left eats itself. Well, I'm, I'm very curious to talk about that one because I've been seeing, you know... People, you know, people on the right spinning it as like, you know, rules for thee, not for me. Look at how the elites, I guess, when you're rich and famous and you're an actor, COVID don't affect you. Yeah. And, and here's a contrast of your kid's classroom. 
Uh, the health department tells TMZ, yes, the current mandate in L.A. requires everyone to wear a mask indoors, whether vaxxed or unvaxxed. But it also says exceptions are made for film, TV, and music productions. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Amy host Cedric the Entertainer even joked about the virus in his opening monologue. We had to vax to come here, he said, noting the show's precautions. I got vax. I did not have a reaction like Nicki Minaj's cousin friend. I got Pfizer because I'm bougie. Pfizer, that's the Neiman Marcus of vaccines. Moderna, that's Macy's. Johnson & Johnson, that's TJ Maxx. <laughs> San Francisco mayor breaks COVID restrictions with BLM co-founder Alicia Garza. So yeah, the mayor of San Francisco. No relation. Oh, the Garza? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the mayor of San Francisco, I guess. Wow, that's funny. BLM co-founder Apeido Garza. Yeah, right. La verga. Yeah, so the mayor of San Francisco has all these rules out, yet she's in the, uh, kicking it with the BLM people, no mask. Oh, yeah, this was a good one. Nobody showed up to the D.C. protest except none but media, feds, and motherfucking <laughs> undercover cops. Oh, that shit was hilarious. The memes, bro. The memes and then the media trying to spin it as there were people like, you know, they always get the camera at the right angle, right? Somebody was getting detained. Did you see that clip? Yeah, the guy who they were like, he has a gun. And they're like, I'm undercover, yeah, man. Bitch, I'm a fed. Fuck out the way. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a fed. <laughs> it was nothing but feds. Dude. It was so many feds. The feds didn't even know who the feds were. Exactly. Wow. The dudes in shorts and that, that was the best meme that went around. It was like only feds. Uh, it, the one with the square, it's like, pick each square that has a fed in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had like the fed boys outfit, like you could get the, the, the jean shorts with the roll up yeah. bottom. And they all had some big bulge, not in the front of the pants, but inside, <laughs> in their left, you know, pass, or, uh, uh, pocket side. I'm guessing it's a gun. I thought it was a, a recorder. Oh, um, to get audio recorders? Yeah. Uh, huh. We about to get into it. So, yeah, man, we've been talking about this border. Um, I mean, from the moment, it was literally like January 21st. Mm -hmm. And boom, the Hondurans and the cartel. Basically, you know who has control of the border right now? The cartels. Biden literally handed that shit over to the cartels. I get it. It's all in how you look at it. But if you watch MSNBC and CNN all day, you don't even know what's happening. You literally have to get on TikTok and the Instagram and shit like that for like, Drew Hernandez or, or Jorge Ventura and the Inform with Anthony type people, El American. Like, you have to go, even like uh, Ben Burquam, there's like a handful of real journalists going down there. Not no punk ass Jorge Ramos. You think Jorge Ramos got his little recorder and took his little happy ass to the border? What no. See, we've been going in on all these other people. We have not been going in enough on Jorge Ramos. He ain't no real journalist to me, man. He's just a neo Marxist with political ties. And he's super biased. The clip that went up the other day on the What Did He Said page was so fucking funny to me. I don't know. I watched it 15 times. Oh, that's good. It was just so funny. And everybody was just like, I'm glad you finally went on him. Yeah. This, I'm that, gonna have to, I might, dude, I'm trying to find a, hard, a, a balance to like, okay, what are you going to post on your main Instagram <laughs> page? Because people get so triggered. It's like, okay, I'm done with the HBO taping. Yeah. Right? It's going to be a bitch <laughs> to cut me out now. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have a little eight minute gap if you cut me yeah uh a fire eight minutes fire so, yeah one of the most fire eight minutes ever touched hbo um it's hard because as we keep going through the weeks right like things like they're piling upon each other like there's just things that are happening every day mm -hmm. non-stop it's a like, lot a lot it's like man we go ahead go well ahead. it's not even like just texas stuff because just it, in texas alone there's a lot of things going on but just you know afghanistan and economy dude the whole thing right and you want to think to yourself i'm reading a book that i'm going to get for you because i want you to read the actual physical book itself too mm -hmm. it's called the subtle art of not giving a fuck you ever heard of it i had it do you yeah you've read it yeah okay fantastic it's a great book right <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I think you could just read the title and know pretty you much could, what it's about. You could. You can, yes. It's like most self-help books, and you and I have talked about yeah, self-help yeah, yeah. books, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like some things are, they beg repeating, you know? Okay, so how about this? Remind me of some of the tactics or the main takeaways of how do you not give a fuck? So the so he references Bukowski, right? But to sum it up, the main thing is like, if you give too many fucks about things that don't really matter, you don't then have enough fucks to give about the things that really do matter, um, which ends up being community, friends, family, and then whatever your career or creative endeavors are. Got it. And a lot of us, especially right now, are giving too many fucks about things that we know are outside of our control, mm -hmm. that we know are completely divisive or divisive, however you want to say it, mm -hmm. among friends and family and communities, and so on and so forth, right? So it's just How can like, you not be outraged, Rob? It's true. How could you not like, be outraged? How can you not be at a family barbecue and shit and just be like, Afghanistan? 
We don't leave Americans behind. Is that who we are? But we create content around it. People that don't do shit yeah, true, around true. it, it's like you're just driving yourselves insane. Yeah. Well, you better off just listening to us. Yeah. And, and just be in your car, man. For real. Cause <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, there's a platform here to talk about this stuff, right? So ideally, if you, com- if you interact with our, this community mm-hmm. and then you have other people listen to people that are in this community, into the podcast or whatever, it helps the greater good more than a few take your two followers with your egg avatar and you try to go out and yell it to the world, you're going to live a miserable life. People are going to hate yeah. you. You're going to think you're a crazy person. Da cabron. Da yeah. cabron. Yeah. So yeah, I'd agree, man. It, you know, it, it's tricky though, right? Because it's like, I know I have to save some of the fucks I'm giving. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, it's like, but look at this policy they're trying to cram through. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, they're trying to hide this in there. So it's one of those, I guess, where like ignorance is bliss and just kind of wait for the ship to start sinking before Dude, you start paying. Before we get back onto the list here of topics, <laughs> I told one of my good friends and my old roommate uh, just yesterday, we were talking about something and somehow, oh, the Nicki Minaj thing came up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he just wants the brief like three seconds of what's going on around the world to like be a little bit informed. I kind of gave him the gist of it. And he was like, he was like, oh, okay, well, back to my enjoying my, my day. I don't care. I actually don't care about this, right? And okay. I was like, man, I told him, I'm going to have a, I have a special place in my heart and always will for my oblivious friends. So then he came back with like, oh, you mean memes, video games, and uh, hot chicks on Instagram is something I don't want to look at? I was like, no, I get that shit too. But I also have other things that are just kind of like making me aware of what's going on. Uh-huh. But some people just don't want to know. So let me ask you this. When y'all talked about the Nicki Minaj situation, did he see it or was it presented to him as like, hey, bro, we're li- literally witnessing social credit score and like there is a narrative between the CDC, the fucking CCP, the World Health Organization, like fucking Big Pharma, the mainstream media, and they're all propping up this one narrative. That's and like, I quote, uh-huh. I got the jab and I'm Gucci, so whatever. I was like, all right, man. <laughs> and I quote. I'm and Gucci, I quote. I'm Gucci, bitch. <laughs> I got the jab and I'm Gucci, okay. so whatever. Yeah, so he does not want to hear about Project Veritas. Don't want to get shit about nothing. Wow. So he just literally went and rolled up his sleeve, didn't ask no questions? Yeah, just went to work, went into his regular you know, job. And wow. Whatever. <laughs> but the Nicki Minaj thing, he was just like, okay, so they censored her, basically? Yeah, and then the whole, yeah, and then the, the allegations of the, the relative with the swollen, all that thing, I was like, Okay, I don't have any adverse effects, so I don't care. Uh, okay, that's fine. So basically, you don't care. I guess I guess the way I see it is like, do you care that big tech colludes, in a sense, acts as an arm of the government and is on the side of fucking all this fake shit? Like, if you were to tell your friend, all right, you know, the Lancet, when people started saying, Hey, man, this shit came out of a weapons lab controlled by the CCP and the PLA, and it was leaked, possi- even, even if it wasn't leaked on purpose, they exacerbated the situation. They went sucked up all the PPE, you know what I'm saying? I was going to say PPP. <laughs> they sucked up all the PPE and so on and lied. The World Health Organization was like early on with the tweets, like, it's no human to human. Like, they knew people got sick out of that lab. So I wonder if you were to tell them, like, did you hear about the Lancet? Did you hear that 26 out of the 27 scientists that signed off on this letter all have ties to the CCP, all get money from Ralph Barrick or, I mean, uh, Peter Daszak and, and NIH and what's the name, Fauci Ouchie. I wonder what he would say then. I wouldn't even get a reply to that message. He'd be like, I'm Gucci. 100%. Dude, <laughs> dude, and I swear, I would not, he would leave me on red and then wait until he sent me like a funny meme or something just to completely just skirt around that topic. Wow. Is he like a lefty Larry? Uh, you know, I think he identifies as that now because his girlfriend's a very self-identified super liberal, mm-hmm. and she actually listens to a podcast that's about Alex Jones, so it's a podcast where, where people go in on Alex Jones. So the whole narrative in her mind is just people that shit on Alex Jones every week, you know, two days are a the week smart on their podcast. People. Or whoever they are. They yeah. could just be other, like, contrarians or, or their own kind of conspiratorial people, but they are anti-Alex Jones. Therefore, if you li- if I were to send her the the Tim cast from today, where uh, he's on Tim Pool's podcast, it, it's like the, it wouldn't get through. You know, mm-hmm. there's too much of this wall. Yeah. So the moral of the story is, which like we've already advised, like don't get a fucking heart situation, don't get stressed out over this shit. Yeah. However, you do not want to be one of them fucking closed minded lefty Larry <laughs> motherfuckers that like the opposite end of the spectrum where you're oblivious. And you're like, guns are bad, and you live in a city, and you're backing organizations that want to destroy America. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, 
you're going to learn eventually. And um, obviously, people in the Rio Grande Valley, they're noticing firsthand, like, hey, Biden's policies, Democrat policies are not jiving with us down here. Like, what's going on right now in, in Del Rio, I think they were forced to shut the um, international bridge or whatever. So that shit affects commerce with, like, between Acuna. Like, there's stores closed in Del Rio, I believe, because they can't get products they need from Acuna and so on. It's a, It's not a porous... Yes, it's a porous thing. Obviously, it's wide open right now. But it, these policies and what's going on, it's like a magnet that's bringing in all these people like who are originally from Haiti but have been living in Latin America for years. Motherfuckers speak Spanish and shit. That's really what it is. You're right, you're right. People right. keep asking, how they coming all the way from Haiti all the way to Del Rio? It's like, no. They've they're been com- waiting forever. No, they're coming from Costa Rica. Or they're coming from Panama or like wherever they're at, Brazil. These are just Haitian people, the Haitian diaspora. They've already moved around. They already tried. They already escaped Haiti. They're living in a place that's somewhat stable, right? Latin America and somewhat, right? Depending on where you're at. And basically, Biden is like, hey, everybody's welcome. So, of course, here's the fucked up thing. These people are selling off everything they own to get $10,000 or whatever, hand it over to the cartel so they can be trafficked. God knows what happens to the women and the kids along the way. And then they arrive. And now Biden is like, "Okay, man, it's too many of y'all. My bad. It's like, bitch, you literally held the magnet right there with your promises and everything else. And now you creating this whole like almost like an air current type of flow of movement of people where they're having to go through Costa Rica. You know what I mean? They're going through, I forget the name of that place. The, um, it's not the dire Strait. I can't remember the name of the fucking thing, but it's like a, it's like an area, I believe in Central America where mm. it's like very dangerous. Yes, 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 yes. It's like a port portal. Um, there's a, there's a listener shout out. I don't have your, I don't have my Instagram open or I forgot your handle, but he suggested twice now a guest for the podcast, which is the president of the border patrol union, mm. who, from what I understand, would probably be more than happy to be on the show. So okay. we'll see, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening with, uh, the mandatory jabs and these federal workers and a lot of people aren't happy about it. So that's a whole other aspect to it, right? We're talking about the Haitians and the, and the immigrants on the ground, but we're also now we're talking about the, the workers and how they're not happy with their, their jobs already hard enough as it is. You're about the media yeah yeah like they're forcing a jab on them like art del cueto always posts this they forcing a jab on the workers but then they're being exposed to like you got they're not forcing a jab on everybody that's being housed under a bridge yeah and i don't know if people like they try to paint trump as satan because he was quote unquote separating people from their parents we already know what that really was he's trying to see if these pelados these grown ass grown ass men are really the uncle or the dad of these little bitty kids that they say mm-hmm. or they're all fucking sedated and shit so hopefully people are starting to realize like all right man maybe chingo ain't a sellout yeah. maybe he just fucking knew the media is doing a number on trump this is actually necessary for a variety of reasons and now what we have is folks from china own all this land near del rio it's you know the uh, border patrol super overwhelmed now they're bringing in more fentanyl from all these other points because they just got so many people to deal with. Yeah, and I don't know a whole lot about Canada, obviously, but Trudeau got reelected yesterday, right? Mr. <laughs> Blackface. And Nicole Arbor, was, wow. she did a live about how he's basically, I don't know if it's, obviously you don't know, right? It's all hearsay. I don't know anything about Canada politics uh-huh. for the most part, other than they don't have freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. He's made it extremely hard for Canadians to buy their first home. Meanwhile, he's allowing a lot of Chinese diplomats or Chinese whatever to go in and just swoop up all kinds of land. They've also, he's like literally invited them and allowed them to train in that climate, like like war, ta- war trainings to be get used to the cold and this kind of like, why would you do that with your sister right below us or right below them, you know? Not only that, but there's parts of China that are probably just as cold as Canada. Yeah. So you're telling me they're over in North America just to train in some cold weather. China got plenty of cold weather. Siberia is right there. That don't make no fucking sense, bro. How much of this shit makes sense, though? It's like, all right, that's what's being reported. I mean, look, the cartels control the border. The cartels are partnered up with with the CCP because that's where the fentanyl come from. You know what I mean? It's like if I was China and I wanted to destabilize America economically, culturally, divide everybody. I mean, everything you're seeing, all these policies, it's hard to look at some of these policies and be like, all right, bro, like you really looking like a puppet. Yeah. Like so how does this make sense? Like 
how are you spending more money not to build a wall? You know what I'm saying? It's like some of this shit don't make zero sense. You know, and the 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 what did he said page and then the what Red Pelt Tamales podcast has a responsibility to like our community, right? Because we're not going to get a lot of white liberals listening to this show, but we might get or, or we do get a lot of people that look like us who might be married to a white liberal, might be married to a white person, might have friends, whatever. Co-workers. Why are you getting racist over there, bro? Because that's the way Joy <laughs> Reid paints the fucking picture. So Joy Reid paints it how? Just by color, skin color. I'm just I'm just talking in just generalities, right? Mm-hmm. But the left in general paints it all about skin color. So mm-hmm. what we can do is present the facts and have people, more people that listen outside of the RGV in Texas, see what's going on in the RGV and in Texas so that when voting comes around, this demographic, our demographic, plays a mm-hmm. huge role in the turnout and in the turn of events of what happens. California. You were in California. Mm-hmm. Funniest picture I've ever seen with uh, after your show, the fuck Newsom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that whole photo a, op. That was so awesome. It was so great, right? So when the, when, the, when the results came out or whatever, or like the day or two after, educated white liberals won him that gubernatorial race, okay? Mm-hmm. Educated white liberals. Edu- I think it was educated Latinos were the most that went against... The, against Newsom? Uh, against keeping him in office, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Okay. Fact check me here. So they did like educated white liberals, non-educated white liberals, or educated white people, and then non-educated and educated Latinos and black people. And they just didn't vote. They they all, for the most part, the higher majority voted to yes on the recall versus no, whereas the white liberals outstandingly came out and said no on the recall. So that's why you have him versus mm. Larry Elder getting in there or anybody else. And alleged shenanigans as well. Alleged. There may be an element of that. Plenty of alleged uh, shenanigans, yeah. right? So mm. if you want to go to other, I mean, you got your boy Francis, you know, saying he wants to run here for governor, which <laughs> is a joke. You're going to have a bunch of other things going on in Texas. You're going to have, obviously, 2024 things. So my point of all this rant is just that the more Latinos that kind of just get with it, you ain't got to agree with everything, Mm -hmm. but you got to at least be honest with what's going on and be like, you know what? Next time an election rolls around, I'm going to actually look at like the top three, maybe top five points and policies these people are talking about. Yeah. And does it pass the sniff test? Well, the problem is, is like, where are you getting your info from and how are they spinning it? Because some people are like, Newsom's doing a great job. You know, worry about Texas. You guys are dropping like flies. Your governor Abbott's trying to, you know, what did he? What did they say? Uh, people get bounties to if you snitch on a woman who wants to get an abortion, and you know they just make us try to seem like we're flyover country, we're fucking backwards and country bumpkins. But guess what? I love being based out of Texas, and we just shot some for HBO in Texas, and you know it's, it's funny because like especially people that want to make it in the show business. It's like, in 2021, why are you moving to L.A.? Mm-hmm. And they're just like, well, because, you know, the, we're thinking about and this and that in the industry. And I'm like, okay, well, all the comedians done left, number one. Number two, all the clubs required, you know, vaccine paperwork and shit. So that's cool if you got it. There's even a club in Houston that uh, supposedly tells all their comics. Fuck that place. Can you believe that shit? Man. Can you and, believe that? And guess that? what? One of, the, one of the comedians told me this. Dude, I'm five years in. I'm just now getting good, and I can't lose my stage time, so I had to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. That, that was that easy? You let a club do that to you? Anyway, the moral of the story is, is like, hopefully our people start to kind of like keep an open mind, say, you know what? I've been hearing the thing about Republicans are the racist ones and this and that. Start looking at it like this. There's two Republican parties. You got the rhinos and you got the MAGA. The MAGA, it's a little bit more for the working class. It's the blue collar. It's like bring back jobs, just basic good economics and shit like that. The way Trump had it, peace through strength. Didn't nobody want no smoke. I 100% agree with you. I would add to that if you wanted to go another route of two type of uh, right leaning people Mm -hmm. is you got the, you have the establishment Mm -hmm. and then you have for the people people. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. That's even simpler than Rhino and yeah, Republic because yeah. a lot of people they're like, "What really? Like, what's this?" Because Dan Crenshaw he always goes in on people using the word Rhino. Uh, a lot of people also call him a Rhino. So yeah, you, you, whatever. That's why? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's so, why he's trying to be like, "No, no, no." <laughs> yeah. So it's like using those terms might alienate some people just because they like him and but don't like that term the way he he you know talks about it. Which, Interesting. Okay, well that's another way to look at it, but yeah. that's another good way to break it down, which is like, you got Megan McCain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Liz Cheney. Mitch McConnell, like people who was like, bro, what are y'all doing over there? Yeah. All right. So the border is in chaos. And before we switch subjects, right? Because we've been on the border and the Haitians and everything. 
Okay, the images of supposedly in Biden's America, you now have the Border Patrol whooping while they're on horseback, whooping black people in a field. You've seen the images. Some of y'all have seen the video. And once, I guess there's different ways to look at it. One way is, oh my God, they're using a whip to whip black people now in 2021. Wow, things never changed. Oh my God, this has to go viral. Oh my God, this is terrible. Or... Hey, man, they let the border get so out of control that the Border Patrol had no choice to hop on horseback and just like like corral, deter, create like a barrier, kind of get in people's way, kind of shush them away on a big ass horse while they're trying to cross the water. Like basically playing defense and blocking and discouraging people. And then you have the reins or a lasso of some sort in their hands. But the image is like whips. Yeah, going back to, you know, the whole skin thing, color thing, right? So you, here's the way I see it, too. You either set a precedence for what's going on, or they're going to literally trample over you like they did on that bus where, allegedly, some of the Haitian dudes started to try to take over one of the buses and attacking mm-hmm. the Border Patrol. Mm-hmm. What would you rather have? Like, wh- what do you want to happen instead? Get the shit under control, or they're going to run over you? Yeah. There's yeah. more of them at this point, I feel like, than they are of any kind of federal agents. And... My Haitian people, it's already in their blood, man. You know, they had a a slave revolt Mm -hmm. a long, long time ago. I don't remember the date, but pretty much they ended slavery in Haiti. They were like, yep, we ain't slaves no more. (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah, Yeah. they they took it back. They're like, bitch, it's only a handful of masters. Fuck y'all. And it's not their fault that they got invited to take this dangerous journey. It's not their fault that this administration is like, okay, I know we promised everybody they can come on, but, you know, these people can, these people can't. You know what I'm saying? And I actually saw a um, a comic, a little like comic strip that uh, they were showing like the guy on horseback saying, you get deported to the Haitian. But then you had like, I think a Venezuelan and a Cuban saying like, uh, saying something. Like basically they don't get deported. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, well, the Cubans weren't invited either. Yeah. It's real funny how that works. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep on that situation. Last time I checked, the context is it wasn't a whip. It was really a lasso. But this is another example of the mainstream media. This is what they do in America. Check this out. They love using slavery and black pain and emotional trauma and generational trauma. They love bringing up slavery. Ooh, that shit. Ooh, that image. Oh, it looks like slavery. Oh, that's going to hit people. Ooh, people are going to get triggered. So they run with that image. They, they want to put it up there. A lot of, I think Axios had to go back and delete their tweet. They're having to backstep now. It's like, okay, maybe it wasn't a whip. Maybe once we saw the video, maybe whatever, whatever. But the white liberal and the leftist mainstream media, that's like their fucking payday. It's like, if we could just find an image of the white man looking like a slave master or an overseer, we're going to run behind it. However, in this case, it's tricky because it's like, oh shit, it's Biden's America. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying. Uh, the way I saw it, like, you know, at first glance, I was like, oh, he kind of looks like Indiana Jones. You know, he had a whip and he would just wrap up his feet and trip you up and then, you know, you'd be down. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Rob, Robert Garza's uh, take <laughs> on the whole thing. But that's that's the situation you get when your president is weak and everybody fucking knows it and they inviting everybody and we went from, oh my God, kids in cages to, well, what do you want us to do? We got 15,000 people under a bridge. I wish, this is the part I really wish the lefties, whether you Latino or you a white liberal, I don't give a damn. I wish the lefties would explain to me, how is this a good humanitarian situation? People are like, bro, we, our money's wet. We got a little bit of pesos left. We trying to get some food and some supplies. Like I met a gentleman on set at the HBO thing. He's like, I got to go check up on my land in Del Rio. And I was like, bro, you know what's going on in Del Rio, right? Your shit looking like little Haiti right now. And he was like, yes, I have land over there. He's like, I have cameras. He starts showing me because I guess they do some hunting and stuff. He says, I have to leave cases and cases of water so they don't go breaking in my shit. He's like, so I'm having to accommodate people. He's like, I don't mind. I just don't want them tearing up pipes and opening up things that don't need to be opened up, right? And um, he's, his, his is a shocker. He said, a young lady just died on my property from dehydration. He said, uh, so now it leaves an eerie feeling. Now you got all these Border Patrol and all these like forensic type people going down there dealing with this dead person. And he's like, it's horrible. It's like, I don't want people dying on my property. And then I told him, furthermore, 
the federal government is not reimbursing you to having to go repair shit. Like, who's giving you your gas and all your gas money and stuff, taking time off to go check up on your property? Because the globalists, you know what I'm saying? The CCP and these sellout-ass fucking Democrat politicians created this scenario. If you live in Del Rio and you don't have a problem with the Democrats right now, if you don't have a problem with this White House right now, you're not like, bro, they not backing us up. We got all our Stripes gas station all full of, it looked like a bus station. Why do you think the RGV is fed up? The working class people of South Texas have had a belly full of this. They done with it. And people still looking at people like me like a sellout, like all oh, those crazy Texans. <laughs> we got Newsome. We're doing a great job. Oh, go Biden. Despacito. Y'all don't see it yet? This man is like destabilizing everything. Everything they touch turns to manure. Was that picture real of him that was like him on a beach on, on a bike? He's on vacation and then Kamal over there flipping coins at a fucking game. And then I saw that that uh, <clears throat> image where it was like the population of the RGV is like 1.4 million and then the apprehended it's migrants. Like almost 2 million. What that I that it, I thought it was one point two, but it could have been two point one. Either way, I thought it was like one point eight. Uh, who Monica for Congress? That might have been who posted it. That's insane. And we know a lot of people down the valley. Should I got a lot of family in the valley? I I, I wonder. I wonder what the situation is. I might be going down to the valley uh, in the winter. Monica for Congress. It's a good time to go. Los tamalitos con los cafecitos. A huevo. Um, okay, I could have. Yeah, here it is. She posted January through August 2021, 1.74 million immigrants apprehended at our border. Damn. Almost 1.8. RGV area population is only 1.4. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. That's how many people, almost 2 million people. And I get it. I miss it. They can't deport us all. Chingo, all of a sudden, you don't want people to come here and have a brighter future. Hey, man. <laughs> Look, y'all. You sound like me. Hey, man. It's like. Just because you live in, let's just say, uh, Chile or something. I don't know where. People coming from all over. Let's just say you live in Chile. I get it. You may want the American dream. Okay, motherfucker, but you in Chile. Like, bitch, hold the fuck on. <laughs> There's You got to come through a proper port of entry. I'm sorry. We can't. Like, man, that's why I love my new material, because I'm touching on some of this stuff. Y'all got to come catch a show. Yeah. Yeah. You got to Y'all got to come catch a show, man. I'm going to be in San Antonio. Remember, I told you I'm going to those shows. So if you want to do something yes. out there outside of your shows. Yeah. Let's make some content, man. Uh, like I said, I want to film some of this stuff. Uh, maybe we'll set up a camera or something. Maybe you can help me out. Set up a tripod or something. Yeah. We shall see. All right. So big text uh, censors. They strike again. Latinos with Trump Instagram page was deleted by IG at 204 K followers, 204,000. Now they got to come back as GOP Latinos. It's important that if you want to support anyone making points outside of the mainstream narrative, that you support them directly, whether it's RPT or anyone else, we got to support creators and commentators directly. It's true, man. I thought we had freedom of speech in America, but apparently the government is working with big tech and they will kick you off the biggest platform. So I sent you that uh, reel <clears throat> that they had posted the night that all the state trooper people had gotten there. All the state troopers had gotten there. Where the lights were on, they were at the border, they were blocking off that point. Yeah, where they, they created through, a right? wall out of sirens. And yeah, all their people. lights and shit. Crazy scene, right? So I sent it to you. Um, well, you were out of town, so you saw it whenever you saw it and then you are like, it's not up anymore. So I went to it and it was gone, and then I was like, I immediately I thought they took the page down, not just the post, because it was like, user not found when I clicked it. Sure enough, it wasn't there, and then I sent you, or like, looks like it's gone, and then like an hour later, I checked again, and their profile came up, but there was like no post, so it looked like, oh, maybe they got suspended, and then today I saw they completely got wiped out. I wonder what the reason was. <sighs> Who knows? They could have cited any community guideline, you know, and it could have been their third one, even though it was for something different. It's ever-changing, right? It changes all the time. So uh, I told you we had some friends who, or one in particular, was going to get together. The kid's birthday was this weekend. He has kids. And all state trooper vacations and uh, days off canceled. Everyone's going down south. So there's a lot to that. I've heard people talk about as far as like uh, as saying that Republicans are just, they're raising more money and saying that uh, like state troopers and other officers are, are getting paid a lot more to go down there and protect the border, but also they're not doing enough to try to secure the border as far as like Texans, Texas officials. I don't know about that. All I know is what we can see. Fox is doing all this coverage with drones. The federal government saying stop 
filming of drones because of uh what is it F- faa faa guidance and, I, or and then i think they ended up getting permission again i think they just tucker told his people just keep filming mm. he said don't stop mm. so it's a shit show so sure we can argue like well maybe the texas gop is trying to raise money and they're really not doing enough to protect but it's like ain't it the federal government's job like we might as well just be texas the country then yeah if we gotta do all the work i mean damn son like i get it man i was young dumb i didn't know what the fuck i was arguing i'm just thinking like yeah don't be mean to latinos and stop being mean to immigrants and it's like okay but you know that means oh wide open borders that's you know what that means you know what that leads to and then people in the black community they got to pay attention to this open border shit because that just drives down wages Mm. so how black folk are still democrat i don't understand because it's almost like as far as i could tell democrats ain't did shit for the black community Therefore, you shouldn't have no fucking loyalty to them. You yeah. know, Latinos, I get it. They're like, oh, well, what about DACA? And well, shit, bitch, we're dreamers and we ain't got no choice but to, you know, orale go Biden. <laughs> but it's like, black folk don't have that issue. Yeah. They're not over here trying to get amnesty and shit like that. You are American. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, you American, you should have some say. Like, stop being treated like a second class citizen. I never thought I would say reread some of uh Nicki minaj's tweets go back and listen to some of her ig lives and see if it kind of resonates with you but i'm in fact saying to do that because it does make sense and it might actually open your eyes a little bit what is she what was she saying dude she was calling everything out from the ccp to the lack of freedom of speech to the censorship she's talking about everything mm-hmm. and she, meanwhile she's she been watching tucker on the low bruh she's been <laughs> she's been consuming quite a bit of red pills like she, she started with the crumbs i'm sure when her relative talked I'm about curious. the jab but she's been f- spitting some shit right so let, then, let me find out she over there with candace dude she might as well be right so then she, well. she retweeted tucker mm-hmm. one of the clips that he did on her with the did you see that the with bullseye. the bullseye and then this fucking super lefty what's his name hassan piker i think's his name Are they, is he a blue check He's, I'm sure he's a blue check, but he's like this super socialist, like self-admitted socialist. And he was like, he's a white nationalist. Yes. So my thing is this, how would you define nationalist? The way you and I define it is not what people it's perceive not how, it. It's, it's not, not how the, the left is. Yeah, doing. it's not the, how they perceive it. So if I say I'm a brown nationalist, they'll be like, <gasps> you racist. So they're globalist then. To th- again, what's globalist, right? globalist is you want all open borders and you're just one big new world order fucking global village and we're all interconnected and china's not our enemy china's an ally and this this, isn't that and you will you will own nothing it sounds like communism you will own nothing and you will fucking enjoy it you will not be able to buy a home and ni modo you'll be happier that the, and that does sound like a lot of what the left pushes right? party of devil whatever this modern left is i don't even know what the fuck this is honestly World, world economic forum it yeah and it just doesn't make sense so he so then her reply was you know the whole like if if somebody on the left or on the right tells you to move because there's a bus coming don't listen to them and wait for it to hit you like that's how how dedicated and like loyal you should be to the left is what you're telling me like i can't agree with somebody that's what nikki said yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 she's like i can't agree with somebody that's on the right yeah and guess what guess what bro i got a taste of that because the way some people I don't know if it's a tribal thing or how we look at everything is like teams and some people are so brainwashed that they're like, oh my God, Republican bad, never. Right. That sounds like all right. What do you mean you're citing Breitbart and Prager you? They're racist. You know what I'm saying? These labels. <laughs> and exactly. And that's like, okay, what's your proof? Well, uh, uh, someone told me <laughs> like, you know, Joe Rogan's racist and Mike Lindell's racist and everybody's, everything's racist. Um, it's interesting how Nicki Minaj is having to navigate this. Like, okay, why is the left always the one to attack you? Why is the left always the one that says you can't agree and you can't listen and you can't change the narrative and you can't go against what Joy Reid is saying or whoever? She's probably putting two and two together. Like, why is the left always the one that want to cancel somebody and threaten and silence and censor? Why do you think I'm happy I'm not on the left? Like, I feel so free, um, especially when I was like on set and sometimes like backstage, you know, like people I know yeah. should have come up, right? Like Steve Trevino and like, hey man, how's it going? How, how'd you doing Cali type thing? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, bro, I feel so free. I was like, people start like, it's almost like, bro, you were ahead of the curve. Like you called it. 
you see you seeing some shit that we didn't know it was gonna be this bad mm-hmm. so i feel great you know what i'm saying <laughs> being based out of texas not chasing no hollywood machine and still being included yeah. still being a part of these fucking productions yeah that's to me bro that is like a win-win chess move it's like you still got your street cred you ain't sold out you still get grassroots you still based out of texas you're still free you still say what the fuck you want to say you know given that big tech ain't kick you off this week <laughs> this week yeah being the key there but yeah um yeah leave it to Nicki minaj too right like she went out on a limb with takashi 69 a couple of times like, meaning like when he was in the heat of all the snitching, snitching and she the, did a song with him yeah she did uh-huh. a couple music videos a couple songs she didn't give no fucks she got paid of course she got mm-hmm. paid but in this case she's risking not getting paid in a lot of regards to just speak her mind and tell the truth and still people won't you know give her a chance yeah if she could pull off doing a song with takashi she could pull this off i'm saying did you see the clip of takashi on breakfast club when they were like hey so you say the n-word a lot uh how do you feel that you're mexican some people say you're not allowed have you seen that oh yeah <laughs> it's hilarious that was so funny because he's like i'm from brooklyn it's my culture <laughs> yeah i can say that you know and then then you get into the um, what's the fucking uh, the victimization? What is that that the wheel of um, oppression? What is it called? Uh, we always refer to it as the oppression Olympics. Um, but what is that concept called? Um, Salu. <coughs> what do you call that? Anyway, um, it's funny because it's like, okay, so I'm Mexican, and y'all telling me, according to the leftist way of viewing everything, because it's all Marxist. Instead of it being about the rich capitalist has more capital and leverage over the worker, therefore capitalism is unfair. They've taken that same Marxist concept and turned it into, well, since you're Mexican, you know, you're oppressed. Therefore, you have moral authority. Therefore, you could probably say the N word. It's like, I thought that was, that's how he should have said it. (laughs) Like, I thought everybody said I'm oppressed. Like when I said cracker. On uh, Willie D's show. They're like, Scarface and Willie D are like, uh, 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 hey, oh my God, he just said a C word. I'm like, half the world thinks I'm oppressed and I'm a victim. I should be able to just tell y'all the definition of, definition of the word. That's so funny. The context. Wish it could have been a fly on the wall to see their face. I can't wait for them to air it. Yeah, if they do. Yeah, no, we'll see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> no, we'll see. I don't hold my breath. Um, so yeah, um, okay, we're, we're on Project Veritas. Project Veritas, man. They, God bless James O'Keefe. <sighs> After losing their studio too in, the, in that hurricane. Oh, they lost shit. it. Did you see that? Their entire office was. Some, it flooded or yeah, something? Yeah. Like they got like 20 inches of water inside their studio. Wow. Where, where were they based out of? Uh, was it in like New York, New Jersey? Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, son. So, God bless James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. They said, we are willing. We're, we are prepared to lose all of our pages from Big Tech off of what we about to expose. And, bro, they just put out part one. Uh, what does HHS stand for again? Human Health and Human Services, I believe. So it is a federal branch or federal mm-hmm. department, right? So these are federal whistleblowers. And it was like a nurse, right? She yeah. started filming. Mm-hmm. The ER doctor. Out of the ER doctor's own mouth she's basically saying like man it's full of crap it ain't doing what it's supposed to be doing like it's ineffective uh we get all these people coming in here with side effects and it was part of the reservation the indian reservation um health system so if you want to talk about racism if y'all want to talk about oppression arguably Maybe some of these Native American people, right? Didn't we fuck them over in the past? Didn't the U.S.? Right. Right? Doesn't everybody on the left already believe that these people are marginalized? Uh, They've been secluded to the reservations. Their land was taken away. They hit them with all kinds of diseases. And all of a sudden, y'all not going to speak up for the Native person who might have a, a side effect? So someone from the fam, I don't want to get too specific, uh, used to work there actually. So not too long ago, <clears throat> so I sent it to them. I was like, hey, watch this before it gets banned. Somebody from the what? My fam. Oh, from your family. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, watch this before it gets banned because it, it got taken off of Instagram pretty fast. Mm-hmm. And then they started re-uploading those little reels because the, the full video is like 10 minutes mm-hmm. and they started re-uploading the videos pretty quickly and they just kept getting taken down. I'm surprised the account honestly didn't get taken down yesterday, but um i thought after two hours they already started blocking the project veritas video i'm sure it was sooner than that Mm -hmm. but then on facebook uh i I was reading people were saying that they're banning people altogether like 
Oh, you could get your whole page taken off. Yeah, just wow. like regular citizens that are reposting it and sharing it. Like they're just removing your Facebook profile. There you go. So this is what uh, was was returned to me. PIMC, which is where the, the person worked, where all the people were, the RNs or whatever, is where a lot of my fe- uh, friends in Phoenix work. What I don't get is that she was an RN. So the lady talking to James O'Keefe was an RN. All the people in the videos are healthcare providers and are complaining that there's no one reporting the reaction in their all caps patient. That's their patient. Also, when you get there, you have to register yourself and do a daily symptom checker, a monthly, then a weekly, then back to a monthly. I filled out mine myself. Uh, It's not a conspiracy theory. It's just if they don't fill it out, they're lazy. So yeah, sometimes what happens, that's the reality of things. It's not, is it human nature to be lazy? It's like, if the system is designed to where, I don't know how many uh, complaints of side effects they're getting, but if the system is set up to where all that burden of paperwork and workload is on you, and supposedly each time you do one set of paperwork for one fucking complaint, it's 30 fucking minutes. Right. So, I'm not saying it was designed like this on purpose, but it's not a question of, oh, well, that's odd that they're not reporting it. It's like... The big story here, the the hidden lead is... There's so many of them. There, some shit's going down, and it's not getting reported. So although the mainstream media and Big Pharma and your Jimmy Kimmel's of the world, all the fucking mouthpieces um, are like basically saying like, oh, it's totally legit, nothing to worry about, because if there were any issues, they'd be reported to VAERS, V-A-E-R-S, right? right? That's where they keep track. And if the shit ain't getting reported, that means we're not getting an accurate account of what's really going on pretty nuts there goes your fucking mind blow right there where it's like oh i thought the government was gonna help keep me safe and protect me (laughs) and it's like yeah but big pharma and this shit ain't getting reported so you can't go based off theirs and it's like yeah it's because the doctors are lazy okay well whatever the fucking reason is some people having blood clots and all types of shit and it's not accurately reported. So you thinking something is X amount of safe? And it might not be. And you see all those videos of, I say all, you've seen a few of them where people are having like seizures and they're like freaking out and stuff. How many of those have gone unreported, right? How many of those aren't getting posted on social media as videos? Are they all just, you know, crazy anomalies? Are they just, you know, the exception, not the rule kind of thing because they're so rare? I don't know. Yeah, was it due to something else? You know, like... Like, let's just say you happen to have a stroke the following week. Maybe you were already scheduled to have a stroke, regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Maybe your health was so shitty you were going to die anyway soon. And that's the thing, too, man. It's like we shut down our entire economy, but come to find out, it's like how overweight you are plays a fucking role. Yeah. Are you diabetic or not? That shit plays a fucking role. Obviously, you never hear Fauci and none of these people reminding you, hey, everybody, we got to drop some pounds. Y'all got to start swinging some kettlebells, doing some push-ups, going for a walk, jogging, have a fucking salad from time to time, get some sunlight. Ain't nobody telling you this shit. So, uh, again, fact check this, but uh, Israel's got like the most vaccinated population. I thought you were talking about my boy Israel, Garcia. <laughs> oh, Israel's got like the most vaccinated <laughs> I'm like, population. Oh shit, what's up, Israel? <laughs> okay, so Israel, the country, right. got the most vax people. And they also have the most cases of, basically the people that are in the, in the hospitals, they're, they're all fully vaccinated. There's more fully vaccinated people in their hospitals than unvaccinated. You're probably not going to hear about that type of shit on the news, man. So, yeah. It's so shitty, man, because, like, it's not... At this point, I should I meant to write down how many weeks we're into this. Last week, I said it's, like, 500 and something days. So, whatever that amounts to in weeks. And we're still at this, you know, crossroads of who's anti-vax and is it a pandemic of the unvaccinated and blah, blah, blah. Where it's like, there couldn't be more evidence. Literally, there couldn't be more evidence to tell you that's not true. If somebody says, if I go to the fucking bar and someone says over my shoulder talking to a friend, yeah, man, we're in, it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated, I should be able to turn around and be like, you know, that's extremely false. And we have more than enough evidence to show is that this is, and you start with the list, leaky, doesn't give you protection, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, doesn't last long. And its uh, efficacy is like 40% or so. But... If I were to turn around to this hypothetical situation, they would be so indoctrinated to what CNN has to say that they would, I don't know, maybe spill their beer on me. I don't know. 
It's fucking nuts. And then you'd have to set it off. You goddamn right. After that, shit, DJ, you better play some little boosie. You better hope he didn't have a collar or a hoodie on. You, hey, hey you, you going <laughs> night night? You going sleepy time, my boy? It sucks. You about dude. to have some of this chamomile tea? You goddamn right. I'm gonna take your IPA too. I'm gonna drink it. Yeah, and yeah, don't yeah, fuck your hoodie too. After I choke you with it, I'm a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably gonna be a small one fit hey bring it to me <laughs> rob gonna choke the shit out of you and give me your hoodie oh uh, that's funny but yeah. that's the world we're living in jujitsu humor y'all yeah. yeah get with it all right yeah. everybody try hey it. i went to four classes so yeah i could joke about it Don went back to training about a month ago two months ago now jujitsu yeah she went that's back awesome. to training she's going like three or four days a week she's you know reunited with all of our old training partners and shit now she wants to do a competition again i'm like all right good for you that's I'll still, great. I'll still beat you up. My boy Daniel, man, I met him in jujitsu class, you know, because I went about four times. Uh, my boy Daniel, he actually mentioned to me, he's like, yeah, I'm trying to do stand-up when I first met him. Oh, right? nice. And now I go to, uh, I went to this open mic type room. It wasn't really open mic. It was like a show. Or yeah. And I went over there at the Seeker Group and um, I pulled up. I introduced myself to the little crowd of uh, open micers that were out there. And they're like, oh, hey, oh, Chingo Bling. Hey, he knows Daniel too. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. They're like, I'm like, which Daniel? Like, Daniel, they're trying to describe him. They're like, he does jujitsu. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, Daniel Jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> that should be his comedy name. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it was cool to hear like the little freshman class of comedians, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, Daniel's doing really well. And it's like, okay. Well, nice. I, I bet. That's my dog from the jujitsu. Good class. for you, man. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, we're going to see what happens with Project Veritas. They're going to put up a Part multiple clips. Yeah. yeah, man. It's getting pretty juicy. And. And it's just, you know, confusing times. Like, we're just living in this time where, unfortunately, the waters are muddy. Everything's murky. We can't figure out, like, shit gets silent, censored, spun. And it's so weird. I I'm just not of the ilk of one that's going to, like, follow everything Fauci says. I'm not going to follow everything the CDC says. Like, y'all look real goofy out here wearing masks outside and shit by yourself. Yeah, dude. Like, relax, bro. <laughs> So if you guys want to go, I don't know if you saw that URL, but in case they do get deleted, and that's kind of one of the reasons that it prompted to making sure that we got back on the newsletter and getting people engaged through the inbox, because mm -hmm. it's just another avenue, right? In case something happens, they have COVID, they have a URL that's covidvaxexposed.com. So Is it vax with one X too? Two, uh, vax with one X. V-A-X, okay. yeah, V-A-X exposed. COVID vax exposed. Don't yeah. put three X's because that's a whole nother COVID website. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of that. It's a different kind of jab. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Chris Rock catches COVID after being fully jabbed and he tweets, I just found out I have COVID. Trust me, you don't want this. Get vax. That's funny because it's like, hey guys, this ain't something what you want. Make sure you get vaxxed. Like, bitch, you're vaxxed. Fully. Double, tripled. And how did it, like, serious question, like. I know it had to be like his personal doctor telling us like, well, in Chris's case, you know, this is what this is why it, it looks like it's hitting him so hard. So we're definitely going to pray for one of the goats, definitely one of the comedy goats. But I'm just so confused. It's like, OK, well, his vitamin D levels low. Like what other shit did he have going on to where or is the vax that shitty? <laughs> how, how is it you're fully jabbed and you're having a hard time? Meanwhile, Rogan is like already swinging kettlebells and doing podcasts. Right. Um, the more annoying part of it was that when I tried to pull this up for the show, his tweet, his uh, tweets deleted. Mm. So it's like, okay. I wonder why he took it off. Yeah. Why he or somebody took it off, right? Why he's saying give back? Maybe whoever made him tweet it also made him remove it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so glad that I'm not, I'm not famous like that. I'm not in the system like that where somebody could just... Like, trust me, man, with this HBO shit, I was already like, oh, man, I feel like a sellout, bro, because... I feel like as it is, I'm having to watch what I say because of fucking big tech. Number two, I got to watch what I say because fucking snowflake ass Latinos are like, see, we want, we want more skins. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, I, I don't envy people like Chris Rock who literally are like, well, I'm just going to have to keep quiet about that because it's not part of what I do. It's like, hey, man, more power to you. But, uh, I, you know me, I got to run my mouth. <laughs> dude for sure i mean and then to kind of stay on that subject though um we posted the clip on the podcast page where bill maher was on kimmel yesterday oh wow did you see that no so he brought up the whole how many democrats thought what are the odds of you getting hospitalized if you get covid Who, bill brought it up yeah yeah oh yeah what well, jimmy say he just laughed like kamala harris he laughed exactly like Kamala uh, Harris. and it's like it's your fault jimmy 
Yeah. He kind of, he basically said like liberal media, you got to take some some responsibility for scaring the fuck out of everybody. And he just oh, laughed as soon as he said that. Oh man, I gotta go watch that, bro. Epic. So. Yeah, that's why lefties hate Bill Maher. They're like, he's a fucking closet Republican, bro. He's just trying to work both sides. Dude, you don't. He's get just m- a grifter. You don't get more left than Bill Maher. Yeah, it's like maybe he's old school Democrat. I don't know, but at the same time what's happening and we're all going to find this out maybe i don't know if it's five years 10 years 20 years 30 years you literally have like this other element that snuck in to the democrat party like you have these radical like what's with all the gender stuff like all this weird super woke stuff that's like totally totally aligned itself with the democratic party where it's like if you're just an old school Democrat and you're, or old school liberal or whatever, and you're just like, hey, man, I still believe in capitalism. And I still think, you know, I still think we need cops. <laughs> you know, like, I still think we need, like, whatever. But you got these fucking, like, purple hair weirdos. Well, like that guy, that Hassan Piker guy, that super socialist left commentator kind of kid. <clears throat> He's only, like, 30 years old. But he just bought, like, a three-year, $13 million house. And the articles are starting to come out, like, can you be a self-identified socialist and buy a $3 million mansion. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, nah, bitch, you ain't no real fucking socialist, <laughs> big dummy. Well, and then your girl, too, or I should say Gabe's girl, uh, AOC. <laughs> that kind of, I kind of want that? What do you mean? What, that's, I don't know. That's Gabe's girl? Yeah, I think we did a live, when we did a, the, the Zoom cast, I think oh, okay. he might have said that she was attractive or something. Hell no. I don't see it. No, nah, I, I don't, don't see, see it at, at all. all. Sorry, Gabe. Yeah, she but, got uh, them bug eyes and she's skinny. Like the, just, she has that like gaunt face too, or like she's a built. She's built like chopsticks. She's built like she's got really bad breath. Ooh, <laughs> damn, AOC. That's how you built. That's how you built. That's so, how. That's how your jaws built out here. Her, she, when she had her Chick Fil A bag on, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm just bringing this up because we already talked about COVID, but I wanted to go back yeah, to it. Tax the rich stuff. Because huh? we talked about it on a Zoom call. Um, she had her fucking whoever holding her dress up, wearing a mask. Meanwhile, she's not wearing that. Look, that was so that I that quintessential, you know, rules for the not for me kind of thing. That's shitty. But you know what, though, man, I was just on a production where I was maskless, and a lot of people backstage were masked. Of course, because you were you're a performer and you get exempt. So technically, yeah, that's what I mean. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, I was tested prior to. But you're not raw rawing for these mandates. True. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely very hypocritical on her part. By the way, I made a fucking scene at that urgent care because I had to get tested uh, within 48 hours for this <laughs> HBO thing. Real quick. Okay. I, I landed from California. I didn't even have a chance to see my family or anything. I, I hopped in my ride from the parking garage, went straight to the urgent care before they fucking closed. Um, they had me wait in the room. Little, little Nas X goes up in there with his little Q-tip. And this motherfucker shoved it so far up my brain where I'm like, bro, are you fucking done? And I'm like squinching my face, right? He's like, oh, don't squinch your nose. Don't squinch your nose, hun. We, we're not, we got to get it accurate. And I'm like, hey, man, hurry up, bro. Like, you trying to show off and get way back up in there. And then he hits the other nostril. I was like, oh, my God, bro. Like, my eyes were watering and shit. And I'm like, y'all really got to get that far up in there? And I, like, opened up the door and shit to the hallway, like, after he walked out. I'm like, God damn, man, shit. So they could hear me. And they're about to close, so there's nobody in there. It's like, shit's very dim already. And I, like, walked up to the lobby. I'm like, ah, Lee, man, like, do you need some water, sir, a tissue? I'm like, oh, my God. What are y'all doing up in here? And then the main doctor, check this out. So the main doctor comes in to give me my results. She's like, okay. She has on like the shield and everything. Okay, everything says it's negative, blah, 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 blah. And are you vaccinated? I said, nope. She said, uh, she said, are you going to get vaccinated? I said, um, I said, isn't the efficacy rate 40%? And it's like, it doesn't last long anyway. And then I was like, uh, I said, you can still catch it, right? Even if you're jabbed. Um, yeah. Isn't it's, natural immunity. And I had my USA flag hat on. So she was already like, okay, we got a QAnon in this bitch. <laughs> so I'm like, so you can still catch it, right? And you can still spread it? And she's like, uh, yeah. I said, okay, then. <laughs> okay, then. Walked out. Yeah. Okay, then. Give me my goddamn results. But anyway, that was my story. Um, I was assaulted violently through the nostril. All right, so tell me about this teacher who they want to fire because this is a he or she. <clears throat> displayed the pride and the fuck the police. She had a, he, whoever, had a fuck the police flag in the classroom? Bro, let me oh, show man. you these images. Idiocracy, bro. What kind of world we live in? Here? Real quick, once I find it. Big goofy. At the very least. It's I'm, like, who are you going to call if somebody break up in your house? 
at the very least, this is in a uh, high school and not a fucking preschool or kindergarten. But, uh, damn, where the fuck did it go? I had a bunch of stuff up that we didn't even pull up. But, um, one second. Well, yeah, speaking of high schoolers and the shit that they're teaching them, uh, we were watching something on PragerU. I forget which school it was, but they were showing, man, they had a book where they were showing them like bondage, like uh, sadomasochism, what is it, masochism, like tying people up, pouring hot wax on people, anal sex, this, that, and the third. I'm like, God damn, in ninth grade, bro? Dude, there's those moms that were like going in on the books that their kids were given. Like, there were little kids too. About, I think that was in Austin area, bro. Was it? It was well, in the Austin area about like dick I. Dick sucking and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, she sat there and read it, and then the other people had signs. What the F? Yep. Hey, man. All the parents out there, man, I don't know. Y'all might want to start waking up. I don't know why it's so dim like that. Okay. But. F the police and America. This is native land. F, F America. This is native land. With three Ks in America. Yeah. So they're like little posters and shit she she put up. Yeah. And then she's got the, all, tra- the trans black lives matter, the trans flag. All the flags. Let, can I read the caption? Uh, history class at Alexander Hamilton High School in LA, United States. How I wrong. It's named after Alexander motherfucking Hamilton. The slave owner. Uh, can you press the X right there? Because I wanted to see. Hey, but look where look where our flag is. Yeah, it's like over. It's draped over a fixture. And then is that the Palestine? Oh, this one over here? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Trans. Are the, the trans and the rainbow trans. And it says anti-American, anti-police propaganda in a California high school named after Alexander Hamilton. How does a school allow this to happen? It's crazy. SOS America. Well, I mean, bro, we've already, we already know there's a pattern. We already know that for whatever reason, that occupation, which is a beautiful occupation to like educate the youth and try to make our country more competitive. However, it's like reading and writing and science and math and spelling and all this shit done took a backseat. Because it's racist. And they're trying to make these people a little activists. Bro, it's ra- math is racist as fuck. <laughs> so I, English is racist. <laughs> yeah, right. Saying uh, English only is racist. So look, man, all the people in California, all the parents... Y'all got to do something. I mean, I know it's happening in a lot of states, including Texas. Like, there's a lot of cases of that bullshit. But don't let John Leguizamo hustle you into thinking that CRT is just teaching a little history and no harm, no foul and whoop-de-woo. Because think about it, bro. They're literally rebranding everything about America. They're like, 1776, false, 1619. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, bro. All the way down to the year. Y'all trying to reframe and repurpose, and they trying to put race at the forefront. They're like, well, 1619, that's when the first, you know, they brought the first slaves. And it's like, well, arguably, some people would argue that some of the slaves weren't even brought all the way from Africa. That there was African people already in America, and they got kidnapped from right here just because, you know, these asshole slave owners, they figured, why am I going to take this long journey, have these people die on me, when I can just kidnap these people up the road? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> you know, with the internet, it's going to be harder and harder to... Once you... If you rebrand everything and, and change everything's uh, origin, it's not like you can't find the information unless they completely scrub the internet somehow over time. Well, yeah, I don't put it past them, man. But... I don't put it past them. The internet is forever. And that's why it's so indiv- it's so individualistic where it's, you know, like what we say to our kids. That's why it's so important, right? I've always been of the of the ilk of that. It's It's all... Uh, I don't even want to use the term personal responsibility because a lot of people brand that as like such a right leaning a, wh- a white trait. Yeah, white trait. <laughs> it's just like I get all right. I don't know how else to fucking describe it. That's what my immigrant mother taught me. It's like, hey, do us a You know, <laughs> what did your boy say? What, what did your George Lopez say? Do us a look. Do us a look. No, but look, like honestly, if you and this is how this is honestly how I see life. If you better yourself. You, therefore, are a better con- contribution to society, right? If everybody went out of their way to better themselves, they would then improve their communities, would, would improve their surroundings, and then, for create a ripple effect of sorts, right? But if nobody takes the time to do that, and instead you're just consuming Joy Reid's talking points, you're, we're gonna, we are up shit's creek without a paddle in the next 10 years. Yeah, man. But hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a couple of brown guys talking in some microphones. Yeah. What do we know? A couple of brown guys with a podcast. 
Ain't no telling, y'all. That hey, be the keep name an eye. Let's see what other bullshit comes out of this uh, Gavin Newsom staying in. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, man, keep an eye on these teachers. Like, they need to start putting cameras in these classrooms to be like, oh, hold on now, bitch. What, what's all them flags you got up there? Should we rebrand Chingo Chats to two, two guys, one podcast? <laughs> like, like two girls, one cup. <laughs> Uh, not a mask in sight at the Emmys, and Seth Rogen had a rant suggesting the Emmys broke the COVID safety rules. Uh, and according to L.A. County Department of Health, he was very misguided. So what did Seth Rogen say? I'll actually play that for you um, as soon as I find that video as well. I, I actually got the full quote from whatever yeah. L.A. County said as well. Okay. That's on the paper. Yeah, health department tells TMZ, yes, the current mandate in L.A. requires everyone to wear a mask indoors. Whether vax or unvax, but it also says exceptions are made for film, TV, and music productions. The county says the Emmy Awards qualify as a TV production, and all the people appearing on the show are considered performers. So masks were not a must for attendees. Additionally, the Department of Health says there were extra safety modifications in place for the event. Yes, everyone had to be fully vaxxed, but they also had to have a verified negative COVID test within 84 hours. 84 I mean, 48? sorry, 48 hours of the show. <laughs> Dyslexic. <laughs> Crew members were either fully vaxxed or recently tested as well. Overall, the public health office says the Emmys reached out to shared safety protocols and they, quote, exceeded the baseline requirements for TV and film productions. Hmm. Um, so, so everybody in the audience had to have a negative test? Mm -hmm. Wow. The whole shebang. Okay. This video won't load, but um, I do have the quote here. Hmm. It was just something dumb. It was just like a week ago I was wiping off my groceries and now we're in a room without ventilation and a ceiling. We'd rather have three chandeliers than proper ventilation. And that was basically the gist. And he was there? He was he was, he was the first presenter. He was on stage. He uh -huh. was the first guy. Like that he was the opener basically. But he night. tweeted that shit. No, he, that was his like little spiel oh, he on said stage. That on stage. Oh my god. So, you know, everybody was laughing. Yeah, you know, these famous actors or whatever and then later on you had um a couple people that were like oh it felt safe to me you know it, like you want entertainment or whatever it was like interviewing people on the red carpet and shit so yeah seth rogan figure it out bro what's up? what did you want seth did you still want to do a zoom award show like is that what you want like here we are man like you still believe in all this like i get it it's real it was made in the lab i get it it's affecting people like we've lost what like over three million people globally the, from the ccp virus but it's like well why the fuck you there then if you so against the whole shit don't go seth i saw a, <laughs> you want to talk big shit on stage like oh this is so fucking hypocritical this is so stupid he says maskless on stage at the emmys no but there was that uh image where i think we had lost more than more people than world war one two uh vietnam and everything combined Mm. to this fucking ccp virus and uh if they were more transparent like if fauci and everybody hadn't um muddied the waters with their messaging and like oh yes masks work no they don't work and this and that and in the emails and you know we starting to see the flow of the money and the the lancet article which everyone cited as their reason as their scientific reason as to how this couldn't have come from a lab because all these bullshit scientists said that it came from soup. Okay. That's why we're in this situation. Like not only was the shit made in a lab with taxpayer dollars, it's like y'all have pretty much damn near covered up everything that could have given us a head start. Like the fact that Fauci didn't go tell Trump and, and the, the white house, somebody in the cabinet, Hey guys, uh, Hey, you know, <laughs> it came from a lab. You know, we funded it. Sorry. We did grant money. Gain of function. An attack on science is an attack on Tony Fauci. Fauci. Tony Fauci. And then you got Rand Paul, like, airing his business out. Like, hey, bitch, did you, did you not, motherfucker? Like, oh, it's not, uh, it's not weaponized. Okay, did you add spike protein to make it more contagious? Well, you know, that's not technically gain of function. I don't know that he would win, but I've been saying this for months now. He is, <clears throat> he's, a, he's really deserving, in my opinion, of a, of a presidential nominee. Ran, that is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. He probably won't, but we'll see. Yeah. Not with his answers. You know, he's a, obviously he's another one. I mean, for one, he'd have to go up against Trump, right? To get the fucking. If he says he's going to run, but if DeSant if he doesn't and DeSantis says he's going to run, he'd have to run against him, which arguably more people might like, but he's also more polarizing. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
but uh, but to anyone on the left, they're gonna they're gonna paint uh, Rand Paul as Hitler. Yeah. So it's almost like well, anybody though. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those where it's like, it's not even about who's polarizing, who ain't. It's almost like who's the best tool in the tool shed for this particular era. But we keep saying this too that like they'll paint, they'll paint, and you're right, they will paint. Like whoever mainstream media or whoever the big tech oligarchs are. But that's why it's so important to be as grassroots about this as possible. Like I don't ever push shit around on my my spouse about this stuff, and she kind of like you never did with my soul. She even told you like don't try to change my mind, Pete, about anything. Right? Mm. She herself may <laughs> have very well she gone. She started more. seeing some shit. She's like, okay, this motherfucker's right. Yeah, yeah. She arguably might have went more right a few times than you on certain things, just because she's like, oh shit, this you know shit's fucked up. You know, blah blah blah. So if you can do that in a way that's compelling, I think it's it's more it's more likely that you could get people to turn out and like see the more moderate side of things versus going extreme of either way in, in three years, you know, in 2024 or whatever. Gotcha. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hey, man, the way this Biden administration is operating, first of all, his credibility is under a microscope right now because he, he's already lost the independence. Um, apparently, he really ain't get as many votes. Like, he ain't as popular as they said he was. So, between the Afghanistan, the economy, we were energy independent, now gas is going up, cost of goods going up, inflation is up, uh, job growth and growth overall is down, stagflation, arguably. I mean, just China about to take over Taiwan, like, the border, everything, COVID, he ain't even doing a great job with that. And, and now they whipping black folk <laughs> on horseback. And that was the one thing he he really ran on, I guess, if there was anything you could say he ran on, was that uh, D- Donald Trump doesn't have a solution, but I do. And I'm empathetic. What the fuck? I'm fu- fucking, I care. And also, search the border. He said that twice. He's on video saying search yeah. the border. He literally said, man, bro, we need to post that. I need a clip of him saying search the border. I'm going to make like, it wrong. I need to find that shit <clears throat> and probably wuss out and not post it on my main page. Yeah, probably don't do that. <laughs> HBO, hurry up and drop this shit <laughs> so I can have my freedom of speech back. Any um, any potential date for this? Oh uh, man, I don't know because they got to drop um, this other thing, something else first. So I don't know. I'll <clears> try what about to... that Hulu thing? Oh yeah, we're gonna do. Or was that Amazon? Um, uh, I forget. I th- I think they're gonna put it on Amazon. It's a ske- It's like a sketch type thing. Uh, we're gonna have a like like a launch party in December. So I'll get the details on Dope. that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, the last two talking points really are obviously we, te- we said at the beginning nobody showed up to that DC protest, which was funny because Trump said, "Don't show up; it's a setup." You know, don't. And basically, he was right. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Major setup, just like the first one. Yeah. Because man, here's the thing: a lot of people don't know. Trump requested ten thousand National Guard for January six, <clears throat> and I think I don't know if it was General Milley or that was one- Pelosi. Yeah, Pelosi and some other people were like, no, 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 you don't need that. You don't need that. And now we know why. They needed this situation where all the cameras were there and you got a couple smoke bombs and a couple, you know, a couple people get trampled, this, that, and the third. And then Ashley Babbitt gets shot. And then you get images of these people climbing up the side of the walls. And then all the feds are instigating shit. And you got Antifa mixed in and this and that. And then they're using that event and those little images to have political dissidents locked up to this day, can't even see their lawyer, 23 hours in, on the whole, basically, solitary, and they put him in the little American Guantanamo Bay. That should be one of the most alerting, alarming things. Like, shit that, you know, if, if Russia was doing this shit, they'd be like, man, look at punk-ass Russia. Damn. And it's us. It's us. To our own people. And we don't see it. We got our head up our ass, and we have no fucking clue. We're too busy calling people sellouts and coconuts. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I've seen those videos going around of people in the the Jan the one six, you know, like the the spouses talking about their experiences or whatever. Ain't that a bitch? It's fucked up. <laughs> the San Francisco mayor breaks the COVID restrictions with the BLM co-founder. She was just basically partying at a club, no mask, not a mask in sight. Not just her, but nobody she was around had a mask. And when she came out and made comments, it was basically like she she literally used the phrase, "I don't think we need um, fun police." telling you what you can and can't do. Bro, I swear to God, bro. <laughs> these these Democrat mayors, bro. These super woke liberal mayors. Like, they're useless. They're just little puppets, man. Like, they just go with this narrative. Like, starting with Mayor Lightfoot, de Blasio, motherfucking uh, Garcetti. 
Y'all not even doing y'all's job, man. I'm trying to find Like, I went on stage, bro. I went on stage in Oxnard. I was like, it's nice out here. I was like, because I went to San Francisco. And I was like, it took me a couple days to figure out that wasn't dog shit. (laughs) I was like, I thought for a minute the dogs were shooting up too. (laughs) I was like, it's nice over here. Shit, where's the quote? Like, and, and I was like, we got to fix this, y'all. I was, and it, I think people started clapping. And I was like, sorry if I got to be... I was like, sorry if an outsider has to come over here and, and say it. I was like, this shit got to get fixed. Fuck. It's the quote from who? The mayor? Yeah, it was It was literally... I just wanted to read it because it was so stupid. It was FTP. So, oh, and I was going to say, too, when you're saying it, he may not have gotten... Uh, your Joe Breezy, gotten all the votes that, you know, allegedly he got. Yeah, his, his approval was low. When you have stadiums erupting with fjb that just makes me want to go to a sporting event <laughs> <laughs> those are all i think those were all nah maybe there were some professional ones but most of them were like the big college games which is pretty uh it's pretty big stadiums i mean i think people are starting to step out of the mode of like okay they're gonna call you a bigot they're gonna call you a racist but then again i'm, I'm quoting the white people then again we're white anyway yeah. so they're already looking at you crazy and the left, I mean, the radical left, man, they done lost their mind. Some of this shit is so goofy that it's like, uh, I'd rather, I rather get confused as QAnon. <laughs> you rather, yeah. I'd rather have you fucking call me a fucking crazy QAnon Trump supporter sellout than whatever goofy shit y'all doing over there. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, man. Uh, great, great episode. Great episode, Chico. A lot to cover, man. Hey, Biden makes them great because he's fucking up so much. We have so much to talk about. Shout out to the radical left. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making this show possible. Yeah, man. Y'all keep making the headlines juicy. Uh, I can't wait, man, to hit the road again. Like I said, I am on a high right now. Uh, I just feel so professional. I just feel so appreciated. You know what I mean? Everyone's like, oh, my God. Everybody in San Antonio like, bro, you started here. I look at you, bro. You in HBO. Damn. And I was like, hell yeah, player. But, uh, you know, we keep it humble. Next stops, Addison, Texas. After that, back to San Antonio. And then we have Raleigh, North Carolina. Please tell a friend. Get your tickets now. Chingobling.com. Oh, dude, I found it. Don't, quote, don't feel as though you have to be micromanaged about wearing masks. Like, we don't need the fun police to come in and try to micromanage us and tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. We know that we need to protect ourselves. Motherfucker, skip down. Uh, we need to be protecting ourselves, Bree told reporters on Friday when she was attending this event with artists. So they called her out for not having a mask on in a club, even though that's the rule? Even though that's her... She's very strict about San Francisco mandates. So if you go to a club in San Francisco, you got to have your mask on. Yeah. In the club. Yes. That's the rule. That's the rule. And... That was one of about four quotes. The other one was, I wasn't going to be uh, taking my, putting my mask up and down in between bites of food and drink. I, wasn't gonna, I just wasn't going to do it. Those are her mandates. That's your rule. Oh, my God. Yo, if she gets, uh, mayors, do mayors get reelected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if she gets reelected, something's up. I really wonder. I, first of all, how many, mon- I know there's some. I know there's still. And this good- is CNN politics, by the way. You can go look it up if you don't believe it. Here's my question, though. What is the black and brown population of San Francisco? How do they feel? I, I know this is like a, she's what, Latina? What is she? She's black. Okay. I just wonder how they feel about the left. You know, because we've been so tied in with the Democratic Party for generations. I wonder how they're like, this is very goofy. I cannot vote for these people. Yeah, man. I just want to have conversations about the shit with people that are so gung-ho about it. Like, I, you know, Rogan's very famous for saying this. Like, not, not being so... um attached to your ideologies right or to your beliefs please change my mind i you know crowder made that meme famous like change my, the change my mind segments he does please change my mind like democratic mayors are full of shit change my mind yeah please and I they'll would, be like no they're not or which one specifically okay pick one that ain't yeah uh francis <laughs> francis had a good run at senate you know or di- rather didn't have a good run at senate. either way you can actually phrase it either way because people will believe that he did and people you're talking about beto yeah, your boy Francis. Okay, he had a run at Senate. Uh huh. Yeah. What, what are you saying? Some people will say that he had a good run and it was close. He okay. lost by over 200,000 votes, but people will still say that it was close. So okay. maybe that is close in the grander scheme of things, right? Okay. He bowed out of the presidential run after eight months because it was a catastrophe. He couldn't get anybody, he couldn't rally any, fed, any um, you know, national attention or, or like rally any national fucking support. Um, what else? Yeah, he was a congressman for a few years, wanted to go for Senate. Uh, once he started saying, uh, hell yeah, we're going to take your, your AKs and your fucking whatever, ARs, ARs yeah. and AKs, 
that's that sunk his ship immediately. Now you're going to make a fucking gubernatorial race against, you got Abbott rerun, running again, and then you have uh, Alan West, and you have uh, Trump's homeboy, which I forgot his name. You even have fucking Chad uh, Prather in Dallas, you know, rallying people up there. Like, this guy, it's such a joke, man. They have no one else to run on the left as far as uh, governor here in Texas, but they'll do anything they can to get, keep those talking points in the news because what they're going to keep bringing up is the abortion bill. And that might be the only thing that sinks anybody that tries to run on the right because they're going to ask them nationally, what do you think about that? Do you well, think that was a good move? Well, guess what? We're going to be keeping an eye on it because this is our country, yeah. <laughs> Texas. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we're definitely going to have a lot to say. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And um, the show's only getting started. This was episode 90. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do for episode 100. Maybe we can go to Jokesters in San Antonio. If mm. you look at the calendar and maybe if it coincides when I'm scheduled to be back oh, or not. Yeah. Um, but I think Jokesters would be a cool venue for a live podcast on stage. All right. Badass. We shall see. Thank you guys so much. Y'all take care. Stay up. Peace.